Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Spill the Matcha Tea. So this is basically my first official video, so show it some love please. And one of my last before 2021 ends. So before 2021 ends, I wanted to share 21 things that I learned as a UCLA college student. A little bit more about myself. I'm currently a senior majoring in statistics and minoring in digital humanities. So before we start off though, I wanted to um, note that these lessons that I've learned throughout my years, four years at UCLA, um, some of them may be more specific to UCLA, but others more generic. But either way, I hope you can take, you know, something out of this. So let's get started. One uh, thing that I learned was that you belong and are enough, you know, focus on yourself as it is easy to get bogged down from what others are doing. You know, at UCLA, you're going to meet some really incredible people, whether it be other famous YouTubers or basketball players or actresses, actors, people just doing amazing things. But don't forget, you know, that you are also at UCLA for a reason and out of all the other applicants, they chose you for a reason. So don't forget that. So number two, college is different from high school in many ways. You know, you still have organizations or clubs, right? Like in high school, but you're actually planning your own schedule and day. You know, club meetings are more in the evenings, your classes, maybe you do have some classes in the evenings, but mostly in the mornings or afternoons. But in the end, you're planning your own schedule and day. And think of this as kind of that transition period before you actually go into the real world as an adult. So number three, a lot can happen in a year as we can tell from what has happened these past two years with the COVID pandemic. Uh, for me, like at one point I was doing a presentation and then the next week we were moving, you know, everyone in the dorms had to move back home. So a lot can happen in a year, let alone four years. So make sure to take advantage of every moment. Number four, try new things. This can be with food or maybe taking a class that you're interested in or even maybe thinking of switching majors. It's never too late. I actually changed my major at least three times <laughs> looking back and reflecting. Number five, you know, like I mentioned, since a lot can happen within your four years or three years or two years at UCLA, make sure that you remember your roots, where you're from, uh, you know, whether it be your origins, something like that, but make sure that you remember that and be humble with yourself and others um, because you're going to meet so many different types of people from different backgrounds and cultures. So number six, and what I am continually striving to, you know, incorporate into my life, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. There's a lot of things that you can get wrapped up in. And sometimes we tend to think of the, only the end goal and not really think about enjoying the moment as it is so make sure to take care of yourself there are days it's like okay where there are days you are simply doing nothing um not doing any work you know sometimes you just need those self-care days number seven don't sign up for 8 a.m discussions or lectures unless you're an early person <laughs> um, because you're probably not gonna you think just because high school you know, you're attending classes from around eight, maybe even seven, all the way until three that you can do it, um, that you can take this many classes and you can take all these classes back to back. Um, you know, it depends on the person, but uh, personally, from my experiences, um, don't sign up for 8 a.m. unless you really, really want to sign up for 8 a.m. And number eight if you're considering on double majoring or even like double minoring or even minoring and you're not a little bit too sure about it, definitely talk to an academic counselor or advisor early on so that you're completing all that you need, you know, in the certain amount of time maybe that you want to graduate or something like that. And if you need advice on a specific major or minor or classes, I recommend looking at the UCLA Reddit page as well as specific um, UCLA major major uh, Facebook groups um, so that, you know, you can see which classes are more popular or even get more advice 
from others who are currently taking the major. And number nine, if you also have some spare time, consider planning out your three to four year plan so you know exactly you know what classes you are taking. This can be stressful at times. For me, I didn't personally take it more seriously until my third year. I actually changed my major like three times. So I can, you know, elaborate about that more in a different video. But if you know what, you know, you're set on a certain major, um, think about how you are planning those classes within the time you are at UCLA. For number 10, it's easier said than done, but try to develop good study habits by setting out time every week to catch up on work. So, you know, 10 weeks in an academic quarter can go by really quick. I mentioned a lot can happen in a year, but 10 weeks, honestly, you think you in your mind, the, the number 10 might be quite large, but it goes by really quickly, especially if, you know, in high school, you're used to a semester system. And you're going to hear a lot of people say that because many times if you're taking a STEM class, you might have at least two midterms and then a final. So basically week three, maybe, um, or around that time, you have a midterm. And then a couple weeks later, you'll have another midterm. And then a couple of weeks after that, you'll have your final Obviously, you know, kind of going back to the fact of taking care of yourself, try not to overwhelm yourself. It's definitely okay if you're struggling. Um, I definitely had my times where I struggled, but it's good to develop those study habits earlier on, setting out a block of time within your schedule to look over material and write down specific questions you might have for your TA or professor. So now to add on to that number 11 before you know it your time at ucla will go by like that so take the time to look at the sunset um, you know smell the roses and flowers at the botanical gardens and most importantly make sure to take the time to build relationships with others um, whether it be students from other organizations um, those you meet inside your residence and dorm hall or you know your apartment mates or your TAs, professors, um, you know, these relationships don't have to necessarily be romantic, but it's, when you're at UCLA, it's an amazing opportunity to network. Um, and I can elaborate on a different video on like tips on how to network and all that stuff, but you'll be surprised and amazed by what your fellow Bruins um, will and can accomplish. So number 12, don't be afraid to reach out to people. Uh, like I mentioned, whether it be your dorm neighbor, the president of an organization, the resident director who is in charge of residence hall, your resident assistant, your RA, or going to your professor's or TA's office hours. You know, one of my TAs, I remember, actually start in a Disney movie. So number 13, on the note of, you know, TA and professors' office hours. Google Calendar will be your best friend. I use it for my classes, office hours, meetings, work. You can also use other scheduling and organization applications like Notion or the built-in application, you know, on Apple devices. So if for number 14, if you live in dorms, you don't really need to bring that many clothes if you're going back home during break. Uh, pack for the weather, for example, for fall, for um, the end of fall quarter, and especially during winter quarter, those are definitely more chillier uh, sides of the weather with occasional rain. So you may also want to invest in an umbrella. But when we're talking about like the beginning of fall quarter, especially when you're moving into the dorms, that those months are a little bit warmer. And also uh, with packing, you don't really need a printer in my opinion because we have various like printers um you know near the dorms and then also there are printers in the libraries you have to just pay like a 10 cent or a small type of fee and then there is also a free printing option in our student activity center that is on campus and i can definitely go more in depth with the amenities and perks as a ucla student in another video if y'all are interested so comment down below as for 15 um what i learned uh, there are various athletic sports events that you can attend such as gymnastics and soccer and girls basketball 
games that are free. So you actually don't have to buy the um, Den Pass, but more of like the popular games, such as like the men's football games and basketball games, you might want to invest in Den Pass if you're um, a sports type of person. So now on to number 16, something else that I learned. Some buildings like Bolter <laughs> on campus can be very confusing. So definitely check out your class locations before the day of class. Um, sometimes Google can also be untrustworthy, especially if you're looking for a building in Bolter. Cause one time I was led to like the back alley of Bol the Bolter building. So don't be afraid to literally just ask anyone where a specific building or room is, you know, people or most people at UCLA are pretty welcoming, so don't be afraid to ask. Number 17 is during the campus tours, they tell you where Bruin Walk is, which is like the main way to get to campus. And you'll see that a lot of student groups and individuals would be fundraising, selling 85 degrees bread, or they'll try to promote their club organization, especially during the beginning of the quarter. But honestly, don't feel bad if you're just trying to walk to class and they're just trying to shove a flyer to you and you just ignore them. If you are that type of person, you just really need to take the flyer, then take the flyer, then maybe recycle it if you're not really that interested. But you can actually avoid this by taking a route, which I call like the North Campus Way route. So if you're going from the dorms area, you can go past Covell Commons, take those stairs down and go around or like past Wallace Stadium. And then that will actually take you more to like the North Campus side of, um, you know, if your classes are located near there, for example, like public affairs and all that stuff. And for number 18, what I learned, and I'm really grateful that I learned before coming into UCLA was that Bruin Walk is a specific platform for reviews about professors. So it's like um, rate my professor, but specific to UCLA. And with that, you can get, you know, some insight on classes or just like the grading scheme and maybe some tips, but obviously take everything with a grain of salt. Number 19. So this has to do more about enrollment passes, but use your first enrollment pass for your important major classes. So basically for the quarter system or specifically at UCLA, um, I believe it might be the same for UCI too, but there are two enrollment passes. During your first enrollment pass, you can only enroll up to max 10 units. And then when it, you reach your second enrollment pass, you can enroll up to the you know, how many classes that you need essentially, but um, up to the credit limit set for whatever college you're in, whether it be the College of Letters and Sciences or the Engineering College. So I recommend actually using your first enrollment pass for your important major classes and make sure to take note of when the final exam dates are if applicable so that, you know, you're not taking classes that have the final exam dates, or you're trying to avoid final exam dates on the same day, um, if you can. And also with the, the enrollment pass, your enrollment time will definitely get better with more classes you're taking at UCLA. Number 20. So what I learned from, you know, current Bruins, as well as Bruin alumni, is a lot of, even though you might not be using Facebook as much. Um, there are UCLA Facebook pages call, specifically called free or for sale pages that are useful for finding used textbooks or course material like lab coats. So many times actually you won't really be needing a textbook or you won't need to really buy the textbook unless instructed by your professor. I recommend actually waiting until like the first week and then your professor would normally tell you if you really need it or not. Um, but, and sometimes also before class, maybe a couple of days before they'll post the syllabus. So you can actually refer to the syllabus um, before class starts. Finally, for my last thing that I learned over my time at UCLA, don't be discouraged. You know, you'll face rejection from organization trying to apply for a club, uh, maybe job interviews, trying to get a job on campus, 
or even scholarship applications. You might also receive your your worst like bad grade, like your first C on an exam, and it's 50% of your grade. It's okay. Like what matters is that you get right back up and you don't give up. Um, if there's anything that you take away from this video, it's this, whether it be, you know, at UCLA or whatever you do in life, don't ever give up and know that you are enough.